What's up, everybody? Welcome back. My name is Mike Schwartz, CEO of My Zone AI. This is my second ever podcast. I'm listening to the comments. I heard you. I was too starchy. I wasn't excited enough. I'm going to be more excited. We needed more color in the background. What's with the collared shirt? I even brought out the strobe lights today. That's right. When things get exciting, we're going to press the flash button here. <laughs> Anyways, good to see you guys all. My name is Mike Schwartz. I think I already said that, but we're just one shot prompting this shit without editing. Why? Because AI is changing so fast and we need to be able to pump out content. Uh, some of my favorite influencers, uh, you know, David Shapiro, for example, he just puts up his slides, puts it out there. And I get the most value from him. So I, I really want to follow in his footsteps, get this, these ideas and thought leadership out to you uh, quickly without cuts, without edits, without, you know, post-production and all that kind of fun stuff. So on my video yesterday, I was talking about the uh, oh my God moment, kind of making fun of all the YouTube videos where you see these AI influencers and everyone's like, ah, I guess that's what thumbnails are getting the clicks. But seriously, it was that type of day yesterday for me when ChatGPT announced their connector. So if you haven't had a chance, check out the video that I did yesterday. My first one, it's blowing up 450 views already. Thank you all to my, <laughs> my mom, my sister, my wife, everyone who clicked on there. Uh, but connectors, man, my head is spinning. There's so many opportunities with connectors. And so I've been doing a bunch of research and deep research using connectors on connectors and ah, my head is spinning. So I was trying to think of like, what's a good thing to share with you guys today? I wanted to share one quick win. I thought today I was going to show you how I do my research to learn things because I'm probably spending at least 30 to 60 minutes a day just digesting things using AI to learn about AI. So uh, I'm just going to be randomly pausing uh, in between so I can make this uh, nice and succinct for you. But so I got a whole bunch of questions about connectors and I'm going to show you how that works. So first of all, going over to my screen here, you can see I've just been <laughs> chatting back and forth with AI, just trying to learn uh, about like what they are, what they can do, what the difference is, um, etc. So uh, some, some of the questions I've been having are, well, there's a long list. So I've just been going back and forth, prompting AI, asking all sorts of questions, investigate things like, for example, it appears that you can only use the connectors like email, for example, when you're running, if I'm running a deep research, I can see, oh, I can get Gmail working and I can do a deep analysis. And um, then in other situations, if I'm not doing deep research and I try to um, see the specific connectors that I can add, suddenly Gmail isn't there. And and, um, <clears throat> and then so if you have to use deep research to do a deep analysis of your email, you're going to quickly rip through the, those limits. You've got a, a limit of like how many how many deep research can you do per excuse me, how many deep researches can you do per month on a, on a team's plan? It's only 10 of the main ones and then 15 of the light ones. And so, you know, we've got a bunch of questions been going back and forth. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to summarize everything that I've learned in the last hour of research. I'm going to quickly put it up into gamma, create some slides. I'm going to share the slides with you. We're going to walk through some of the learnings and uh, I think of it's some of it's pretty profound. So I look forward to sharing that with you. Let me hit pause and we'll continue in a second. All right, so let's just summarize this. Um, note, note I'm using Super Whisper. I am talking, not typing, superwhisper.com, 850 a month. Uh, just sign up, use it, you'll thank me later. All right, based on all the research we've been doing, I want you to uh, summarize all of this into a beautiful slet, set of, say, 10 slides, key learnings, one key learning per slide. Um, use it in the voice that you know about MyZone AI, and I'm going to take these and paste them into gamma.app. So make them short, maybe like a headline, three to five bullet points per slide per learning point. Uh, please proceed. So, all right, so I've got my slides generated here from ChatGPT after, I don't know, about half an hour of research back and forth to learn as much as I can about connectors. I went over to gamma.app. I pasted my slides in right now. Gamma is building my slides for me. And, uh, yeah, we'll come back here when they're done. This will probably take about a minute. All right, now I'm looking at my slides and uh, I can see some of them are pretty good. It covers all the main points I wanna talk about and I don't want lots of detailed text. I just wanted a few key points so I can talk freely. Uh, nobody likes it when people are reading off of slides. But I've noticed some of these I images here are uh, pretty shitty. So I'm gonna quickly uh, edit some of these like this one here. 
Hey, can you come up with a, a cool image I can use for slide number one? Something that represents ChatGPT, OpenAI, connecting to the rest of the internet like Gmail Drive, CRM Slack. And while you're at it, see if you can incorporate the MyZone AI logo as well. All right, so I just submitted this prompt, uh, uploaded the MyZone logo. It's going to think about that for a bit, hopefully create an image that I can use to uh, replace this heading uh, image on Camadon app. Okay, we're learning as we go here. So I've created my image. I brought it over to Gamma. I've uploaded, replaced it, thought it looked good. I also realized that while I'm looking over here, I should add a video of myself. So I quickly updated OBS software, dragged a video over to camera two, which is my laptop. We are learning as we go. Okay, I'm back. So in the background, I was just doing some more deep research, trying to understand the difference between synced connectors and unsynced connectors. And I was updating my slides, so I'm ready to present in Gamma. That was about a 10 minute break to prepare all of, all of this content. So we'll get started. Okay, so just a quick recap from yesterday. What are connectors? They came up from ChatGPT yesterday. They allow you, like if you're on the Teams plan or the Enterprise plan, you click into your account, click on Manage Workspace. You can go to your connectors. Uh, from your connectors, you can see all of these existing connectors, and then you can connect here also to custom connectors with an MCP server. Uh, we've already assigned tasks for multiple clients that want to connect to Asana, to Slack. I've got a client in the construction industry. We're going to collect, uh, connect to his ERP, which is JobTread. Anything that has an API connection, you should be able to connect here and bring them in. So that's how you set them up. Uh, it is a lot bigger than I realized, and I'm just sort of coming to grips with all of its potential. So uh, one thing you need to know between different types of connectors, some of them are synced and some of them are non-synced. So the ones that, that uh, are defaulting to uh, synced from, from the beginning is, I believe it's just Google Drive, OneBox, uh, or Google, not Google, Microsoft OneDrive. Sorry, I'm not a Microsoft guy, I'm a Google house. And SharePoint and Box. Those ones appear to be synced based on my, my research. Now, if they are synced, you're going to get much faster information. It'll slowly sync up over a period of time. It indexes that locally within ChatGPT, and you'll get lightning fast responses. But the big thing here is this won't use up your deep research uh, quotas, because the only way that you can do research on your non-synced uh, connectors like Gmail or custom API connections like Asana, Slack, what have you, is you have to use your deep research credits. And that's a problem. Like we have a quota of, on the Teams plan, we can get 10 regular deep researches or 25 of the light or 15 additional of the light ones per month. So you got to use them sparingly over here. So yeah, just understand the difference between synced and non-synced. If you want to see, I mean, in the back end, um, I can see here, this one is a synced connector. It shows up at the top and all of the other connectors uh, it will appear, uh, you know, down below here. So, um, yeah, very important to understand the difference between synced and non-synced. So how do you get started? I mean, just go to chat GPT, uh, connect. This is interesting. When I was on this page, it looks like all of these things were already connected, but the way that I was connecting, I would hit the tools. I would search with a specific connector and I was connecting through here. And then it would ask me to, you know, authorize myself through a uh, specific tool. Uh, just like you're seeing in here. So that's how I was sort of authorizing myself uh, one by one and saving those connections. But then the next question people have is like, okay, now I've authorized, I've set up my connectors. What the heck do I do with them? Where do I get ideas? And why is this so powerful? Uh, show me. So let's ask AI. So uh, what I was doing there with AI is we would ask it to come up with use cases uh, for us. So this is a great prompt. You say to AI, you know, based on everything that you know about me, I want, it will tap into its t total memory of, of you and then suggest five ways that I can use connectors on my first party data to, to um, improve my efficiency or to make me a better leader or whatever it is. But first, ask me questions um, one, one by one or two by two until you have enough information to, to help me with this. I'll show you this, this prompt in action. So based on everything that you know about me, triggering all that permanent long-term memory, I want you to think about how we can use the new OpenAI connectors on my first party data to help me become a better leader. I want you to ask me 
up to three questions and for the sake of time just ask them all at once um, about my data sources and you should already know a ton about my zone and my business just to help me come up with ideas so i like that you know ask me questions part just to give it some additional context it'll do a much better job um, i'm going to switch from 03 which is a slower model for the next prompt to 04 mini just to speed things up for you guys and hit pause in the meantime Okay, it thought for 10 seconds and it was asking me, okay, which internal platforms hold the conversations and artifacts where your leadership shows up the most? Is it Slack, Gmail, Zoom, Teams, etc.? Within those systems, how is the information structured today? So if I had already done all those custom connectors, which my team is still setting up for me right now, I would say something like this. Uh, the main, you know, we've created custom connectors for Slack, for Asana, and for uh, a Google Drive. And that's where most of the information is. All communications that we have with our clients from Zoom, for example, are archived within Slack channels. So you will find copies of absolutely everything that's important from a leadership perspective in the Slack connection. How is information structured? Um, well, if you analyze Slack, you'll see naming conventions, but every project or client is, is labeled by, by client name. It should be very intuitive uh, naming conventions through Slack. And the exact same naming conventions are mirrored within our Asana account. Um, there's no data that I want to exclude. Um, please proceed using Super Whisper, not typing ever. So yeah, I would do something like that. And a ChatGPT responds back with some examples of things that I could do based on those data connections, which I'll be setting up. So uh, first step, get all your data points connected, have your tech team connect to those MCP connectors. You're going to have to use up your deep research credits. You only get 10 full, 15 light, 25 for the month on the team's plan. So use them sparingly. Otherwise you can do unlimited for any of the synced connections, which include Google Drive, SharePoint, and Microsoft. OneDrive. So some of the best ideas that I came up with here so far, I'm going to share with you some use cases from my earlier research. One, this was a cool one, email follow-ups. So I, we don't have really salespeople at MyZone. I'm the only, I'm like the CEO and the only sales guy. Most of our referrals come inbound and sometimes we just get so busy with clients. I forget to follow up with people. So I was like, huh, could I run a deep research on my Gmail inbox? and look for any sales proposal in the last 12 months that I've sent out where I didn't follow up with and there was no reply from the customer. And I did it and it worked and it was awesome. Now I've, I've encrypted or anonymized the, the data, but it looked, it looked something like this. I was like, hey, here's one. On this date at this time, you, you were supposed to you email this person. This is what you did. You didn't follow up. I found three <laughs> that I didn't follow up with in it was like the last six months. Apologies to those of you probably not watching these videos anymore. Uh, so I think that's a super powerful uh, thing. Um, and I think in the future, when you connect this into agentic workflows, it won't be long before you can do this, connect it to say make.com, have this as a scheduled task. Actually, I think you could do this right now with an IPA team. So every Friday, analyze everything that the sales team did in the last month and look for any mistakes that they made within your CRM like salesforce.com or whatever. And then I want you to post to our Slack channel a list of any proposals that weren't followed up on. So instead of having to go in there and hire like a CRM expert who updates your reporting pages, that creates custom reports and things like that, you can literally build a deep research agent externally that will analyze this uh, and just go on, on a schedule. So I think that's, that's gonna be pretty powerful use case. So email follow-ups. Another one I came up with was uh, financial analysis. So this one, because you are using the, I use Google Drive, that's where all my financial records and uh, spreadsheets are stored from the accounting team. So I was like, hmm, I wonder if I could go back and do a historical analysis of my finances and, and, and look at projections and give me some insight into that. And this is what I came up with. Now I also had it anonymize the data. I don't think my numbers are, are this good, but uh, it looked very similar. It actually uh, included financial analysis, projections, the analytics, like it created these images that are very similar. And as it went through and analyzed all my financial history and projections, it provided source. Like I could click and see exactly where the file came from in Google Drive. So I thought that's a really powerful use case. Our controller, uh, Malay, he will analyze. So we, we have like eight or nine different financial divisions within our uh, company and once a month he has to 
prepare these reports and then analyze them. And then he uses ChatGPT to analyze various financial reports using custom GPT, and then he pastes them into Slack channels. But something like this, he could have that run on a schedule, and it just happens automatically in post to the Slack channel uh, for you. So I think that's a pretty cool use case of these connectors. OK, what else have we got? So your quotas for deep research, again, you have to use deep research to access the custom data connectors that are coming through MCP. Also, that's Gmail and others. It's just a couple that are synced that don't use your quota. So your quotas within your team's account, you got full 10 deep researches per month. You get 15 lightweight. Now, if you need more than that, you have to move to the pro plan. You can't upgrade your team's account to pro. I've tried, it's stupid. You have to have your personal account updated and then make all those connectors again through your personal if you're going to exceed your quota. So I think in the meantime, just use your deep research credits uh, sparingly. Important to know. Okay, what else have we got here from my AI generated slides? Um, it was talking about some ways that you can stretch your budgets with deep research by, you know, you can merge multiple deep research queries into one. Um, just, yeah, you, yeah, you can, you can batch them. Yeah, it was just a quick point. Merge them. I, you can literally say research this one thing or you can say research these five things. You can do it in one prompt and it can maybe stretch out your deep research credits up to five times if you sort of carefully merge your deep research prompts uh, together. And uh, I think, no, that wasn't it. There's one more slide here. So where do I see this going in the future? I see this as, I mean, what we're going to see is we're going to move to synced data right now it's just a few things that are synced i think everything will soon be synced data is cheap you're going to see ChatGPT probably come along and say hey can i uh, synchronize all of your data from your slack from your asana from your monday from your salesforce it will keep local copies and i think we're going to see those limits really increase i think you're also going to see some integration of if this then that type you know make or n8n type functionality so that you will be able to agentically do things like run this deep research analysis on my crm do it every friday and then submit a report to slack let the sales team know and send an email to the sales manager with an attached pdf i see this, those things uh, coming very quickly here with connectors Okay, and one final thing I wanted to share with you guys is we got access to VO3, Google's new video model. Yesterday, we started testing it out with our clients. We had to sign up for the Gemini Ultra plan, which was in Canada, 179 a month for the first three months, 350 per month ongoing. Quite expensive, but I think it's gonna to be totally worth it. So we started creating prompts for our clients just to test out its capabilities. This is a video we created for uh, Brad from Lux Quality Homes up in, in, in Kelowna. And we're trying to see like, can we have a video of, of a drone that would sort of fly through a home, sweep around, go through the living room and enter the kitchen and show the interior of the home. And we interviewed Brad and he gave a whole bunch of context. We had ChatGPT act as the prompt engineer and create a beautiful prompt. We went into VO, we pasted it and using VO3, this is what we got. Check it out on our first try. So yeah, lots going on in the world of AI. If you are a leader, you're probably feeling a bit overwhelmed. That's okay. It's normal. Just embrace it. Have fun with it. Play around with connectors. Understand the difference between synced data and unsynced data. Make sure you understand how to do your deep researches and use your credits carefully, how to pair things up, how to connect to your first party data sources, how to prompt AI to say, come up with awesome ideas on things that I can do. Look at those examples of analyzing your email, analyzing your financials, and then look to an IPA team on how you can automate those using tools like make.com or n8n and turn these into agentic flows that just happen on their own this is going to be game changing for your company thanks a lot guys have an amazing rest of your day and we'll hopefully see you tomorrow if i can keep this habit up